Hello, I'm Nuria Kearns and welcome to the first edition of Market Roundup for 2017. As always, this is our roundup for the latest numbers and movements in property. The Halifax House Price Index reports a fourth successive month of house price increase. With 1.7% in November, the average price now stands at £222,484. House prices in the final three months of 2016 were 2.5% higher than in the previous three months and highest since the March high of 10%. Compared to the same three months a year earlier, house prices are 6.5% higher. Annually, Luton had the biggest percentage rise in the last 12 months, with an increase in house prices of 19.4%. The next closest was Barking and Dagenham at 18.6%, and Luton's neighbour Dunstable completes the top three with a 17.9% rise. Total UK home sales in 2016 set to be broadly unchanged from 2015 and 2014 at 1.2 million. Sales have largely stabilised since the middle of 2016 with a 1% increase between October and November. Sales in the three months from September to November, however, were 9% lower than in the same period last year. This according to HMRC's seasonally adjusted figures. In a similar fashion, the Nationwide reported as stabilising in the property markets. Robert Gardner, Nationwide's chief economist, said the story of UK house price growth in 2016 was one of relative stability. Annual house price growth ended 2016 at 4.5%, the same as the rate recorded in 2015. Both the Halifax and Nationwide agree that the outlook for 2017 is largely dependent on the wider economy. Martin Ellis of Halifax said, Slower economic growth in 2017 is likely to result in pressure on employment, with a risk of rise in unemployment. This deterioration of the labour market, together with an expected squeeze of household spending power, is likely to curb housing demand. And Robert Garner of Nationwide had a similar message. Like most forecasters, including the Bank of England, we expect the UK economy to slow modestly next year, which is likely to result in less robust labour market conditions and modestly slower house price growth. According to the Mortgage for Business Complex Lending Index, buy-to-let lending returned to some form of normality during the fourth quarter of 2016. The share of lending for acquisitions in the buy-to-let market rose from 28% in the third quarter to 38% in the fourth, which was comparable with the second quarter. David Whitaker, CEO of Mortgage for Business, said it is encouraging to see that the share of lending for purchase in the buy-to-let mortgage market returned to normal in Q4 of 2016. He also highlighted that there has been a sharp rise in landlords buying through the company's structure. He said, with the changes to tax relief set to be phased in from April 2017, this trend is unlikely to be reversed anytime soon. Across the market, 2.99% is your average 75% loan to value two-year fixed rate. For longer term lending, Paragon have launched a new five-year fixed term loan at 3.75%, borrowing up to 75% loan to value. And for those borrowing up to 65%, they have a 3.25% loan newly available. And Landbay has launched a range of new buy-to-let products aimed at professional landlords, including expats and those with HMOs. The products, available up to 80% loan to value, include a standard term tracker at 3.88%, HMO tracker at 3.98% and an expat term tracker at 4.38%. For the beginner investor and those with one or two properties, there may be a price war on the horizon. Independent mortgage expert John Charcoal believe there may be a raft of lenders offering cut price rates to the so-called vanilla end of the market, as high street lenders have little alternative but to drop rates for smaller scale landlords with lots of equity, widely considered to be lower risk. John Charcoal expert Simon Collins is doubtful this expected competition will extend to the professional market. He said whether this will lead to higher pricing in the complex end of the market is really yet to be seen, but the whole buy-to-let market is undergoing a real sea change. According to Collins, the widening gulf on rates will emerge partly as a result of tougher lending rules forced on lenders by the Bank of England. Many lenders have raised their income coverage ratio to 145% and applied a 5.5% stress rate to comply with new Prudential Regulation Authority standards. This to help ensure borrowers can repay their mortgage if interest rates increase. 
Looking at rental figures now, annual rental price growth slowed to just 1.7% in December, which was less than half the 3.8% increase recorded in December 2015, according to Homelet's latest rental index. The average UK rent for new tenancies starting in December was £892 per month, which although higher than December 2015's average of £877, is £6 lower when compared to November 2016. And that's our snapshot of what's going on this month. Join me next month for Market Roundup and Simon will be back next week with Property Box News. Goodbye. Annual house prices grow. Action. The Halifax house price in... <laughs> Bye. <laughs> it's growing the wrong way.